All right. Uh, so the exponential distribution kind of approximates because there are some uh, some errors here and there. There are gaps here. There are protrusions there. But overall, I think you could agree with me that if I draw the curve, if I throw away the bar 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 charts, right, and just sketch a curve, uh, you would agree with me that it is quite reflective of the observed data, and. Through empirical observations and studies, we find that uh, so long as when the events occur spontaneously, remember what is spontaneously? We said that would be uncoordinated, right? Unorchestrated, just happen on the entity's own uh, whims and fancies. And the time gap between consecutive occurrences of the events, uh, if they are measured and you plot it in a, in a histogram like this, the general distribution will tend to follow exponential distribution. Okay, so we're going to, uh, in many cases of our examples and uh, solutioning of, of problems, uh, when we will just directly assume that the inter-arrival time is exponentially distributed. In other words, even though we did not observe and record the data, we're just simply going to assume that, for example, patients coming into our hospitals they are in the distribution of inter-arrival time is exponentially distributed. This is how we make use of uh, past knowledge and data and distributions and extrapolate it to our specific current circumstances. So that's very useful because the stu uh, studies has, have shown that uh, it is not a very specific kind of behavior. right? So long as we know that the patients are coming to hospitals on their own accord. Uh, for example, uh, treatment of, of uh, flu, fever, and all that, that, that's like, you know, kind of random, right? So they come in. But treatment of COVID-19, for example, where that we know that there is a pandemic wave sweeping over and it's driving all the patients to come in at the same time, then it would not be well described by a exponential distribution. So let's come back to our discussion about exponential distribution. Uh, so that brings us to this very important uh, knowledge, let's call it, uh, that we, number one, it is coming from uh, the studies of statistics. And number two, is very applicable to us now because the theorem from statistics is that when a particular phenomenon exhibits exponential time intervals, the inter-arrival time, the time gap between events, all right, when we measure and plot them, if it strictly follows exponential distribution, then it implies that the rate, the corresponding arrival rate or occurrence rate will follow Poisson distribution. Okay, uh, and vice versa. And because it's mathematics and we can prove that it's the other way around as well, that when the rates are following Poisson distribution, then immediately we know, we can tell, we infer without any doubt, right? As a matter of fact, that the inter-arrival time of occurrences of those events will follow exponential distribution. Okay, so let's put that theorem in context here. That is, we have two rates. We have lambda and mu, right? We have two time intervals the inter-arrival time, the time gap between two consecutive customers about to enter into our system, but not yet in, and one over mu, which describes the average service time experienced by the customers who are already in our system. So uh, we, we can apply the theorem uh, two times. So on the arrival side, suppose the question tells us that the arrival rate, the arrival rate, when we say arrival rate, that has to mean instantaneous arrival rates, right? Because average arrival rate is one number, there is no distribution about it. Uh, many, many different instantaneous arrival rates, then there will be fluctuations, and that we can group them together to form a distribution. So if we were told that the arrival rates exhibit a Poisson distribution, then what can we say about the inter-arrival time? 
All right, then we apply this theorem and say, well, the inter-arrival time then must be, all right, must be following exponential distribution. Okay, so that is what we need to understand here. And uh, so, so the from the rate coming to the time, this part is uh, more important, more important. Although in statistics, uh, we can also go back in reverse. That is, if someone tells us that the inter-arrival time follows exponential, then we can conclude that the, the arrival rates will follow Poisson distribution. So this result, while true, is less useful in helping us to solve problems. Okay, how do we apply this knowledge of knowing that the arrival rate is Poisson and therefore inter-arrival time is exponential? How do we apply this? Even though we can tell the outcome, how do we apply this? Uh, we'll see in later sections how we can do that all right so for now we focus on if someone tells us arrival rate is Poisson we must be able to conclude that the inter-arrival time is uh, exponential now since this is a statistical result mathematical in nature we can then apply to service rate and service time because they are related to the same physical phenomena of the server serving the same customer right so uh, if we are told that the service, the instantaneous service rates follow Poisson distribution, then applying this theorem, we get to conclude that the service times, the service times, because they fluctuate, one customer might take 15 minutes, the other customer 5 minutes, the other customer 5 seconds, next customer 25 minutes, right? So it fluctuates, but we can conclude that the fluctuations, when we plot them out as a relative frequency, uh, histogram will be described very well right, by the exponential distribution. So this is the theorem that we should and we must apply to help us solve problems in queuing theory. Okay, then we must look at uh, how systems may be configured to build larger systems. Today our examples will be involving single server but that doesn't mean that we cannot have more complex systems built out of it uh, we can serially connect them together to more appropriately describe a scenario such as uh, visiting a particular hospital we have to queue up then we meet uh, and consult the doctor after that we queue up at the pharmacy to take our medications so that would be well described by such a serially connected single server queue system. If, if we are looking at a specialist case, you know, only that doctor can consult you. Now, number of servers. Uh, in this video section, we will focus on single server because we are getting started. Uh, in the next seminar se uh, video sessions, we will look at multiple server scenarios. The formulas will get uh, more complicated because we have to think about the interactions, but we're not going to uh, dwell too much into the complications of the formulas. Instead, we will look at when should we apply them. Fortunately, it's very simple. When the server is larger than one, number of server is larger than one. Now, we also talk about waiting lines. That means uh, we may have one queue system to have three servers, or we can have three queue systems each having one server which way is better? So we can answer those questions or plan those scenarios when we understand more about multi-server queue systems. As of now, we are focusing on just the single server scenario to get us started.